Hey, thanks for joining us today. We're almost done in our journey through the fruit of the Spirit. Got one more to go tomorrow, uh, but we'll be starting a brand new lockdown look up devotional series starting on Friday. And it's going to be a journey through, drum roll, the armor of God. So really looking forward to that as a follow on from this series and from what we've been speaking about in our But Why sermon series. So tune in on Friday to hear the first in our Armor of God series. But for today, uh, we have the second last fruit of the Spirit to look at, and that is the fruit of gentleness. Now, what gentleness means, it, it, literally the definition is uh, meekness. Mm -hmm. Meekness. That does not sound like something we would really want, would it? Meekness. Why? Because meekness sounds like weakness, and nobody wants that. But I did hear a very good definition of meekness that says this. It says, meekness is not weakness, but power under perfect control. So the idea then behind meekness or gentleness is kind of like, you think about it like this, um, think about a famous boxer, right? World's best boxer. And he's kind of hanging out and somebody comes to pick a fight with him. Doesn't know who he is and he's picking a fight with him. And this guy, world champion boxer, could, I mean, he could just annihilate the guy. Like he has every ability to squash him, but he chooses not to. And so he holds back on his ability to crush the guy and instead exercises some gentleness. That's really what this idea is. It's power under control, or maybe to put it a little more accurately, it's authority exercised gently. So it's not the kind of doormat type person who just lets themselves be walked all over, who never stands up for anything. It is authority, but it is authority exercised differently, not aggressively, but gently. That's gentleness. Now just think about how countercultural that is today, and therefore just how attractive true gentleness really is. Because today, everybody's fighting everything, right? It's called the age of outrage. Online, everyone has an opinion and it's not gentle. It's not kind. There is no restraint. It's just everybody. It's just all out aggression, fighting each other on everything. It's a very aggressive world that we live in. And gentleness just comes as something that's so countercultural and just so attractive at the same time. And you think about it, like why are people so aggressive? Why are we fighting everything so vehemently? Well, it's got to come from a place, I think, mainly of fear. So we're fighting because we're really just fighting for our specific piece of the pie. If I don't get in there, if I don't take charge, if I don't bulldoze, then I'm never going to get anywhere. I'm never going to achieve what I want to achieve. I'm never going to get the things that I need to get. It's kind of this desperate need to fight for survival. Uh, so, so fear just to get or fear to defend. So if we feel like we're being criticized or feel like somebody's challenging us, we have to immediately rise up and, and very angrily defend ourselves. But think about this. As someone who is a disciple of Jesus, as someone who lives in the kingdom of God, who believes in a sovereign God. If you believe in a sovereign God, that means you believe in a God who will provide for you. You believe in his sovereign providence. You believe that he will fight on your behalf. That's what we looked at our Easter Sunday sermon. This is the God that we believe in. So we don't have to so desperately defend ourselves or fight for what we believe is ours because we trust God. That's what enables us. That's why it's a fruit of the Spirit. It comes from within, from a deep, settled knowledge that God is a warrior who's fighting for me and He's a provider who will give me absolutely everything that I need. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 5, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Notice, blessed are they, not because they will forcefully take charge of the earth or aggressively fight for what's theirs. They will inherit. The meek, the gentle, 
the ones with authority, but who exercise it gently, inherit. It just it happens. God provides it for them. I truly believe that these days, what the world needs to see is gentleness in action, true gentleness. It's something so attractive and can win people for the kingdom. That's what Philippians 2 says. I want to read to you Philippians 2. Uh, verses 14 to 15 it says do all things without grumbling or disputing so that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation now listen to this among whom you shine as lights in the world that's how attractive true gentleness, true meekness is. And it all stems out of knowing, trusting, believing God is sovereign. He is in control. He is the ultimate provider. He loves me. He can intervene in my life to do anything he needs to. And I trust him. Amen. Let's pray. Ask God to... Bring this up out of us as we shine as lights in a crooked and twisted generation. Heavenly Father, I pray this for all those listening to this today, that you would grant to all of us by your Holy Spirit the sense of settledness, of calm, that stems from trust and belief in who you are as sovereign King of the world and of our lives, because you love us. And you can intervene, and you do intervene in our daily lives. So would you grant us this peace that enables us to act with gentleness? May we speak when we need to speak, have conviction when we need it. Would you lead and guide us? May all of the authority that we have that comes from you be divested through us in a way that honors you, Jesus. You've given us authority. May we exercise our authority just as you did. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, don't forget to scroll down below on this blog post where you can get all sorts of great activities for your kids to help you help them learn during this lockdown lookup. Cheers.